I didn't know it was the last one. When I saw it, I noticed how the bright colors stuck out against the plain white walls. I was visiting a cluster of Catholic institutions in Mount Angel, a small town in rural Oregon. Everything I'd been taught about this place made me believe it had all been here forever. No one told me that this painting, titled College Without Walls, was actually the last surviving monument to a story that was literally painted over. That a revolutionary university occupied these same hallways for a decade. It was called Colegio Cesar Chavez, and it was the first independent four-year Chicano university in the United States, and one of only a handful named after the great American civil rights leader while he was still alive. So what happened to this small, trailblazing college in rural Oregon? And how did it change the fabric of the Pacific Northwest? To understand how Colegio got started, we have to jump in at the end of another story. Rewind to 1973. Mount Angel College, a small school in rural Oregon with an impressive socially conscious curriculum, a core Chicano community, and a troubled bank account was about to fold under financial pressure. The school had to make a choice. Some believed it should shut its doors for good, but leaders in the school's core Chicano community and the community itself had a different idea. We had put in a lot of work in recruiting Chicano students. We basically wanted to continue to see how we could continue the education of Chicano students at Mount Angel College. I met with the president of uh, Mount Angel College, Father Christian Mondor, and I asked him, now that we have a fairly large number of Chicano students here, what's the possibility of converting Mount Angel College into uh, a Chicano institution, a fire ed? It wasn't an easy transition, and the problems facing the school didn't magically disappear. But on December 12th, 1973... We renamed the college Colegio Cesar Chavez, and it was a, a momentous day. We had a lot of people there, and uh, there was a lot of inspiration and hope that, that for once, you know, those students who were not recruited, not enrolled, not invited to attend colleges and universities throughout Oregon were now able to come and, uh, and be part of uh, a learning experience. The community held a special ceremony to celebrate the birth of the groundbreaking institution, and President Ernesto Lopez spoke. Like the farm worker struggle, we are also struggling nonviolently to bring educational opportunity to students deserving a better life. We know the struggle ahead will be a great one, yet we are committed to survive. In the inaugural student handbook, Colegio further defined its mission to provide educational opportunities for persons who have been denied access to higher education and offer a bilingual and bicultural program through which Chicanos may maintain their culture and resurrect their history. And then the creators of Colegio did exactly what they set out to do. They started programs that successfully expanded educational access to women, workers, parents, adults, and many students who were excluded from mainstream education. These programs were all part of Colegio's College Without Walls philosophy. Colegio's approach emphasized practical and professional learning within the community and empowered students to define their own paths. In 1977, more Chicano and Chicana students graduated from Colegio Cesar Chavez than all of Oregon's state schools combined. Colegio Cesar Chavez attracted some of the best and brightest from all over the country, including Chavez himself, to join in its community. This incubator, which became a stronghold for the Chicano movement, facilitated a meeting of the minds that gave rise to some of the most powerful advocacy organizations in the Northwest. But for all its innovation and conviction, Colegio never fully escaped the ashes it rose from. The fledgling school immediately inherited a million dollars in debt from Mount Angel College. The Department of Housing and Urban Development gave Mount Angel patience and flexibility as it worked to regain financial stability and pay off debts. Colegio did not receive these same luxuries. As soon as we changed the name from Mount Angel College to Colegio Cesar Chavez, HEW right away stopped the money, the money flow for our students, and that was our livelihood. You know, our kids needed the financial aid. Colegio fought back, and the community gained wide support for their cause in and beyond Oregon. They filed lawsuits and staged rallies, vigils, marches, and occupations of their own campus to resist foreclosure and eviction by HUD all while trying to establish a financial base and achieve accreditation for the institution. Colegio persisted for almost a decade, and even won its accreditation, and eventually triumphed over HUD and secured its campus. A final flicker of hope coursed through the community as they basked in their victories and looked to the future. But the damage inflicted was too deep. 
1983, Irma Gonzalez, Colegio's last president, presided over the final decision to close the school. Someone definitely will have to write this opera, Gonzalez said. The critics are right when they say it is the longest running death in history. The campus sat abandoned for a few years before someone bought and returned it to its pre-colegio owners, the Benedictine Sisters of Mount Angel, who went on to turn the campus into a shelter. All the brightly colored artworks that lined the hallways of the colegio were covered up with a plain white paint, except for one. So maybe Colegio's first and last presidents were both right. The school did endure a long and treacherous battle worthy of its own opera, but when Ernesto Lopez spoke at the school's opening in 1973, his belief in the school's ability to survive was not misguided. Colegio Cesar Chavez did survive. For 10 years, Colegio gave students an opportunity to pursue higher education. Daniel De Siga, the painter who created College Without Walls, went on to become a prominent artist who captured the history of the Mexican-American farm worker. Sonny Montez, one of Colegio's founders and primary leaders in the fight against HUD, became and remained a central leader in Oregon's Chicano movement. And Cipriano Farrell, a 1977 graduate, first formulated his idea for a farm workers union in Colegio's hallways. Eventually, this evolved into Paneros y Campesinos Unidos de Noroeste, also known as PACUN. And since its founding in 1985, PACUN has succeeded in raising Oregon's minimum wage, ensuring Oregon's children have access to health care, fighting for the rights and safety of immigrants and farm workers, and becoming one of the biggest Latinx organizations in the Pacific Northwest. Colegio Cesar Chavez was not an end, but a beginning. What we did in the 10 years of our existence, uh, we, we planted seeds. Uh, we needed an icon, we needed a role models, and we're still at it. Uh, and we've been doing it now for 50 some years.